Time now for the final vlog of 2020. Yes, this year is almost over. A lot of you are very excited about that, myself included. I hope that 2021 is better. <laughs> Please be better, 2021. You don't have to be like the greatest year ever, but could, could you do better than 2020? That would be great. So for over a year now, we have uh, shifted the uh, vlog series, rebooted it since uh, last December, and I am, for the most part, pretty happy about the direction I've taken my uh, monthly vlog series from monthly ideas, topics, trying to focus on a specific theme or topic or idea to uh, just simply doing a recap of what happened during uh, that month. I, I do like the direction that the vlogs have uh, gone since 20... Uh, 20 began. I don't know if I can really give credit to 2020 for that. I think that it is probably for the best to give that to 2019 because that's when I officially rebooted the vlog series. And I don't know if doing the vlog in the snow in GTA Online was a good idea. I debated about whether or not to wait till the snow was gone. I actually assumed that the snow would be already be gone whenever I would get around to recording the vlog. But alas, the snow is still here. But Anyways, if you want to check out previous vlogs, vlogs playlist over on the vlogs channel, thank you to everybody that subscribed to the vlogs channel. So what all happened in December? Some good things, some bad things, some sad things, life things. First off, we'll, we'll talk some gaming news because I know most of you are subscribed to my gaming channel, which I do appreciate. By the way, thank you for getting us to 13,100 subscribers over on the gaming channel as we head towards 13,200 subs. That is awesome. Don't know if I'll make it to 13,200 subs before the end of the year, but if I do, nice. I'm happy to be at 13,000 now. Over here, I appreciate everybody that subscribed to the Vlogs channel. Uh, gaming news, uh, we had some uh, games happen, updates to some of the games I happen to cover and play on uh, the gaming channel, like j this game, uh, GTA Online, along with uh, this uh, new Beetle. We also got an update, the Cayo Perico Heist update, one of the newest heists to the game. For the most part, the heist itself was well received. There's things about the update people didn't really care for. And uh, the Red Dead Online update, the Bounty Hunter expansion left a lot to be desired. But in all fairness, the developers at Rockstar Games had to do both of these updates uh, from home. They were working from home. They were not at the studios. They were probably limited in a lot of ways, and they had to make do with the tools that they had at their disposal while working from home, social distancing throughout the pandemic of 2020. And I feel like the Cayo Perico heist, as well as the Bounty Hunter expansion, was the best they could do in light of these uh, circumstances we all find ourselves in. So that has to be understood and appreciated. At the same time, I do feel like the uh, update in Red Dead Online could have been considerably better. For one thing, we already had the Bounty Hunter role, and all they, all they simply did was they, they expanded the role. And I feel like they could have done a better job. But I'm hopeful that maybe in 2020, uh, the team that works on content and updates for Red Dead Online will do better and have the opportunity to make better content and I hope that they're actually listening to the community of Reddit Online who want uh, a lot of changes made to Reddit Online, including uh, heists, the ability to actually be an outlaw in an outlaw-themed game based in the Wild West period. That would be nice if we had some uh, heists, the ability to rob banks, trains, stagecoaches, mansions, uh, boats, etc. I think that would be a big positive change for Reddit Online and the ability to own properties and, and other things as well. Now regarding GTA Online, this game has been around for over seven years and it's already moving over to uh, PS5 and uh, Xbox Series X. One day, I'll make the jump to PS5 and Xbox Series X whenever I finally am able to get my hands on both of those consoles, right? One day, one day I'll be able to, hopefully. Yeah, the freaking scalper bots. <laughs> so frustrating. First world problems, right? But yeah, I think there was another game, Cyberpunk. Oh yeah, what a uh, for the most part uh, disappointment, and 
CD Projekt Red, another great developing studio out there, they did the Witcher franchise. And a lot of people obviously respect the hard work that CD Projekt Red did with Witcher 3. And they have been working on Cyberpunk 2077 for years, 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 and years. And there have been a few delays. And uh, most were under the assumption that by the time the game was uh, gold and good to go for a December 2020 release, that the game was going to be good. That there wouldn't be any issues. I mean, most uh, AAA games nowadays do have issues. That's to be expected at launch, bugs, glitches, even some other nonsense. But at the same time, to have them to the degree that Cyberpunk 2077 had was uh, herocious. I mean, it definitely needed to be delayed even longer, which is a which is a big surprise in my opinion, especially with how long that game was in development for. And even though I never was really excited about the game, I finally decided after some people encouraged me, they thought that, hey, you know, this might be a game you're interested in, you like open world games, and this is obviously an open world game, has kind of like a sci-fi feel to it. Uh, set in like the future in the year 2077, kind of a cyberpunk dystopia type vibe. And uh, I didn't like it, to be honest. I think I also experienced some issues during my uh, four-hour stream. I just couldn't get into it. I really couldn't. And maybe it was because the same week uh, Cyberpunk came out and the same week I was streaming it, uh, the day before, my grandma passed away at 96 years old. I mean, she had been suffering from uh, health problems for a while now, but maybe that was also a factor for me. But... I just really, really did not enjoy my time in Night City in Cyberpunk 2077. Anyone that did, I'm, I'm happy for you. I hope you enjoyed the game. I always say that, even like with Wonder Woman like 84. Like if you liked Wonder Woman 84, that's, that's fine by me. And if you liked Cyberpunk 2077, even with the issues that uh, both uh, that movie and the uh, video game has, you know, Wonder Woman 84 and Cyberpunk 2077, uh, then that's, that's fine. You have a right to uh, enjoy a game as much as you want, or a TV show, or a movie. You do you. That's just how I feel. But at the same time, I have a right to dislike these things for my own personal reasons. And now we're completely lost here in the snow, but that's fine. Anyways, so Cyberpunk 2077, I just wasn't feeling it. Plus, I think there was an issue or two that kind of pre prevented me from advancing the game any further. And it was by that point I finally had had enough, and I just, after four hours of streaming, I just called it a day on that Thursday, the day after my grandma died. So I was still kind of dealing with the, with it. I knew that she was not long for this world, especially the fact she was 96 years old. She lived an amazing life. She uh, grew up on a farm in South Dakota. Uh, she came all the way down here to Louisiana to, to marry the guy that would be my biological grandfather before he went crazy in the 60s and ran off to join some sort of Catholic cult in uh, Canada. But uh, she obviously was Catholic and I had uh, several aunts and uncles. 15 children total from her, including my father. Of course, my dad passed away some time ago in uh, the year 2016, so he had been gone for like four years now. But grandma, she lived an, a good long life. She had a total of 15 children. Sadly, two of them passed away early on one I think uh, he his name was Michael he passed away at a very young age I think it was it might have been Sid's I could be wrong about that but he was very young when he passed away he was just a baby so I, I think that it probably was Sid's at the time uh, the uh, oldest uh, son Victor uh, he died in uh, Vietnam because you know the Vietnam War but uh, let's just move on from that topic so yeah it didn't really surprise me that my grandma was eventually going to pass on because that's just life. It's just something we all have to uh, accept that eventually our time on this world will come to an end. And you hope that there is more than just this life. You hope that there's life beyond death, whatever you happen to believe or not believe. But she was a very amazing woman. She had been through a lot in her life from like the depression, growing up on a farm, to some other nonsense that transpired. But she had... Like I said, she had a few kids, and those kids had kids, and uh, those kids also had kids. So I have a whole bunch of cousins, a ton of cousins. And she was basically the, the matriarch of our family. She was the glue. The, I guess you could say she was what held the family together, from the good times to the bad times. And, you know, 
now she's gone. But even before she passed away a few weeks ago, I, I knew that, like I mentioned, that she was suffering from health issues. She was mostly bedridden, confined to a wheelchair. And uh, her house had basically become a hospice. Uh, aunt, my aunts and uncles would take turns spending time with her uh, while there was also health care workers over there, too, to attend to her needs. But her mind had started to already go. And I noticed that at least a year ago, because she no longer recognized me. She no longer recognized me. And that was, that was sad. That was when I realized that, you know, Grandma was on her way out. And not to brag or anything, but despite the fact that my grandma has a lot of uh, grandkids and uh, great-grandkids and even some great-great-grandkids, I don't know if she told me this to be nice to me. Maybe she was just being nice. Maybe I'm full of myself. But one of the last conversations my grandma and I had before like, she stopped remembering me is a conversation about how I was her favorite. And I'm not trying to to like boast or flex to all the other cousins out there. I'm just saying that that's what she told me. And I even was like, come on, grandma, I can't be your favorite. No way. And she's like, no, you're my favorite. So, I mean, that, that touched me to actually, to actually have her say that because there are honestly uh, cousins. I feel like that have accomplished a bit more than I have. And, uh, I, I never claim to be the best of her grandkids, not by a long shot. I'm not the worst. There's been a few <laughs> that have done some pretty bad things. So I won't go there. But I, I never would have thought that I was her favorite. <laughs> but that, that that touched me. And maybe she said that to everybody. Maybe all my other cousins will be like, well, it, it, that's funny you say that because she said that to me. And then the other cousin will be like, well, she said the same thing to me. Maybe she was just trying to make us all feel good, right? Or feel better about ourselves. I don't know. All I'm saying is what she told me. So don't, don't be hating on me, cousins. Okay, don't be hating on me. I'm just being honest here. Like I said, I, I don't know why I was her favorite, okay? I, I guess I just was. Unless she has said that to everybody, which maybe she did. Or maybe she didn't. So I feel like she was pretty insistent on, on me being her favorite. Like I said, I, I don't know why. I honestly don't. I, I don't feel like I'm worthy of being her favorite, but you know, I guess I just have to accept that. <laughs> but so that was a tough week, even though I knew she was eventually going to pass on. And when she did Wednesday morning, it, it was sad. I mean, and then Cyberpunk being a disappointment the next day. And then uh, the funeral was on um, sun Saturday. And uh, Grandma, one of the things she wanted was for some of her grandsons to be her pallbearers. And I got to be the honor of being one of the pallbearers. So I was honored to be one of her pallbearers. So that was that was good. And uh, the truth is, I shouldn't have been live streaming on uh, the Friday the 11th. And some people, when something happens, will try to like uh, forget it ever happened and like throw it under the rug and move on and I and I have moved on I've moved forward since that day but I think that too many people come up with excuses whenever they do something now there are factors that that weigh in that have a, a negative and a positive effect on our lives and I'm not saying that everything is your fault or everything is my fault but at the same time we're not always the victims and I feel like too many people don't accept responsibility when they make mistakes and too many people want to be the victim, even if it was their fault. On uh, Friday, uh, December 11th, I had a uh, meltdown during uh, a live stream. I did delete the live stream, by the way. And I think it was just so many factors that were going on in my head. It was like my grandma just passed away. The funeral was going to be the next day. And uh, also my disappointment in cyberpunk. I mean, that was obviously less on my mind, but it was like several things weighing upon my shoulders. And I usually do a better job of reacting to my viewers and subscribers, even whenever they're saying things that I would normally find myself knee-jerking to. I try to hold myself back and think about it for a second, and then I try to come up with a better response. Because it's so easy to knee-jerk everybody, and if you did that all day long, then... 
no one would like you because you would just be seen as a complete utter asshole. But everybody has that that first initial response they would like to make to somebody. But then ultimately most of us are like, no, I'll just think about it for a second, dwell on what they had to say, and then hopefully react in a better way. But I feel like I was just all emotion and all knee-jerking on uh, that Friday in question. So uh, a lot of people watching uh, came to my defense like, oh, no, you were not in the wrong, but I accept responsibility for it my behavior. It was unprofessional of me, and I, I like to try to be professional whenever I live stream and the content I make. And like I said, I do want to try to come across as somebody who is responsible. I mean, hell, before I started recording the vlog, I uh, paid my bills, and uh, earlier this morning, I dropped my property taxes in the mail so that my property taxes were paid, so that the, the city and the the parish wouldn't come after me. By the way, in Louisiana, we have parishes, not counties. It's the same thing, basically. So I do try to be responsible. Every day I wake up, I, I do my chores, my feed my cats, the dog, and all that stuff. So I, I try to be responsible, as responsible as a person can be. But, you know, it wasn't easy, except in the fact that Grandma was officially gone. And the funeral went really good on uh, that Saturday. It was a nice day on Saturday. Like, the, the weather on, on that Friday was miserable. And then Sunday it was miserable. But right in between, a beautiful Saturday. And, you know, the service was great. And, of course, there was social distancing that was happening. People were wearing masks. And uh, everybody was trying to take precautions. And not everybody was able to show up to my grandma's funeral. Because a lot of the family lives across the country. They weren't able to be there. But they were a lot of them were able to watch via like a uh, live stream, so that was good. But the service went good, and uh, then we drove out by police escort to the cemetery, and uh, I, for whatever rhyme or reason, I could not figure out how to turn my uh, my yield lights on, my hazard lights. I've had my truck for what a year or two, and I, I never had to use my hazard lights on the truck. And usually there's like a hazard icon that you could easily locate to find those hazard lights. And while you're in police escort in this funeral line, you know, everybody has their hazard lights on. And I, I spent the entire drive uh, down the interstate towards the cemetery trying to figure out where the hell my, sa my, ha my uh, hazard lights were on the truck uh, without, you know, slamming into the, the car in front of me. So in the end, I kind of just said, you know what, screw it. I'll just not worry about it. And if other people are having a good laugh at my expense, well, okay, fine. But, you know, it was an honor to be a pallbearer at my grandma's funeral and to be there. And also, uh, all the siblings each laid a rose on her coffin out at the uh, cemetery. Uh, white ones for the sons, uh, pink ones for the daughters. And there was also two red roses for the two loves of her life because in, in uh, South Dakota, she uh, obviously, when she was a teenager, she was in love with a boy, but he went off to war because of World War II. And uh, I think he ended up meeting somebody else. But then she fell in love again with uh, the crazy uh, grandfather that went off to uh, Canada to join that Catholic cult. It's a true story, okay? And I don't really consider him to be my grandfather. He's just biologically my grandfather. But So I had the honor of laying my dad's white rose on the coffin because obviously, as I've mentioned, my father passed away in 2016. So... On top of being the pallbearer, I also had the honor uh, of laying my dad's white rose on the coffin. So that, that was also an honor. And it was a very peaceful service. I felt like it, it gave closure to a lot of people, including myself. And it was, it was a beautiful funeral in light of all the circumstances, everything going on in 2020. And that's just part of life, you know. My grandma lived a great life. 96 years, but eventually, you know, this life ends. And that's why it's important to try to make the most out of your life and appreciate the life that we all have. And admittedly, there are times when we're all guilty of not doing that, of falling short. And we all could do better because you never know when your time's up. My grandma lived to be 96 years old. My mom passed away when she was 25. I had a friend that died at 11 years old. Uh, he was sitting at a light with his mom 
and uh, a truck driver, uh, I guess he uh, fell asleep at the wheel or something, and he literally ran over the passenger side of the car and crushed him. I mean, he was only 11 years old. And then I had another really good friend who was like an older brother to me. Uh, he uh, was battling leukemia. And uh, he died because of some sort of like uh, medication addiction. Like not, I mean, uh, not addiction, uh, allergic reaction. That's what I meant. An allergic reaction to some medication. I mean, he was only 30 years old. And, you know, him and his younger brother and uh, his youngest sister, I was very close with all of them. Like, especially the brothers. They were like older brothers to me. And uh, at the time, I was very close with uh, his sister because we're around the same age. And admittedly, I, I had a, a very uh, soft spot for her. You know, but that never worked out. And that's just life. It happens. But at the same time, it's sad that, that they lost their brother and that their parents lost their son because... That's something a parent never wants to go through. They never want to lose a child. And that's just that's one of the worst things that can happen to a parent is that it's not supposed to be that way. Your, your, your child is supposed to be the one that buries you, not the other way around. And, and it, just, it sucks. So that's why I say you have to be grateful for the life we, we live because you, you don't know how long we're each allowed to be here. I mean, we hope that there's more on the other side. But at the end of the day, we must be appreciative of that time we had, which leads us to uh, birthday. Yeah, so December's also my birthday. And uh, this was a special birthday. <laughs> I can't believe I, I have reached this number. And a lot of people couldn't believe it either. A lot of my viewers and subscribers on the gaming channel, they, they don't believe that I'm this old. But I am. And I don't even believe I'm this old, to be honest. Because I, I think, I, for the most part, I take pretty good care of myself. I mean, I mostly eat right. I haven't drank alcohol in years because of my fatty liver. And uh, for the most part, I feel like I'm, I'm trying to be healthier. So maybe I, I just happen to look younger. Maybe it's my Martian um, DNA. Oh, what? I didn't say anything. But anyways, uh, my 40th birthday. Yes, 4-0 happened. Uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, I'm still coming to terms with that. At first, I was like, "No, no, no! I'm just gonna say I'm 39 for now." And I, I was, I was just so convinced that I was just gonna just tell people going forward, "No, I'm 39. No, I'm 39. No, no, no! I don't know what you're talking about. I'm 39. This is my 39th birthday." And then people are gonna be like, "But it was your 39th birthday last year." So, in the end, I just had to say, you know what? I'm 40 now. I guess 40 is the new 30, whereas 30 was the new 20. I have no idea. But yeah, my 30s are gone. And my, my youngest sisters, they're in their 30s. My baby sister, right? Uh, she is pregnant with uh, her and her husband's second son. So they have, a, they have another baby on the way. And she just had a birthday. And she's in her early 30s, just like my, my other younger sister, uh, her older sister. Uh, she's uh, in her 30s as well, and I still remember when they were both babies. And I'm 40. And my baby sister has a baby, and is about to have another baby. And my baby sister, on my birthday, decided it would be a good idea to send me uh, some uh, cookies via DoorDash, even though I'm trying to eat healthier with uh, pineapples, apples, walnuts, um, and trying to avoid cookies and uh, other unhealthy things. So I got a little upset with my sister, got a little cross of her, like, don't do that. Cancel the order. And she's like, I can't cancel it. Too bad. I'm like, just just eat your cookies. And I'm like, but but I don't want cookies. I, I want to be healthy. Yeah, but in the end, I did I did eventually eat my cookies. <laughs> I, I was good. I, I think I ate one cookie a day. Okay, maybe, maybe one of those days I had two cookies. I don't remember, but I, I didn't gobble them up all at once. It was like six, like chocolate chip cookies from like some local bakery or something I don't know but that looks I don't know why that looks awful right there let me turn around but so yeah it's just crazy how that goes 
But uh, for my uh, birthday dinner, I had some delicious chicken curry because uh, one of the things I will say that it was a pro about 2020 for me, and if there's anything that's good about 2020 for any of you that happened, uh, feel free and let me know in the comment section because I would like to know if anything good actually happened in your life because for the most part, this was a pretty bad year. I uh, acquired taste in some new food. Well, new to me. Uh, Vietnamese uh, pho. I love uh, pho. I've been enjoying some pho over the past few months. And uh, Indian food, uh, specifically uh, chicken curry. So I uh, have uh, broadened my uh, palate and uh, have branched out and tried some new things. And I, I'm glad I did. And now I have kind of sort of a, a, a small addiction to pho and uh, chicken curry. Whenever I have an opportunity to get one or the other, I, I will get it. Plus, I'm supporting local businesses, so hooray! And with both, I can I can like order the chicken curry, right? With the chicken curry and the rice, and I I, I get enough to where I can uh, like have half of it for dinner, and then put the other half in the fridge, and then just reheat it the next day. And I do the same thing to the to the pho, right? Like I'll have half of the pho for dinner, and then I'll put the the broth along with the half of the uh, items like the chicken bamboo shoots, the uh, rice noodles, rosemary, uh, what else was in there, uh, the cilantro? You know, I just half it up, right? So I'm, I'm trying to do a better job portioning. So that's smart too, plus economically it it definitely makes you know ordering from a restaurant more feasible financially if you can uh, make two meals out of it instead of just one. And uh, some other things that happened this uh, December 2020. Actually, I still got a few more things to go over on this list. Evotes. Uh, the uh, ominous bill was finally signed by Trump this week. $2.3 trillion. I think 900 of it had something to do with uh, bug relief. And all, I guess people are going to be getting a $600 check. And Trump was actually trying to get Congress to go back and and raise that amount to $2,000 for people. Because like $600, uh, to some people that's a lot of money, but with everything that's been transpiring in 2020, I mean, I guess they say, you know, 600 is better than nothing, right? But in that, I, I do agree with the president, the soon to be former president, most likely, that it would have been better to give everybody like that was qualifying for the check uh, 2K instead of 600. But one thing that really ticked me off, and I mentioned this on the political channel, because I've been trying to post more content on Burns Report, where I do political stuff, news stuff, and occasionally movie TV show reviews. It's, as I call it, my Viva Variety channel. But there was a lot of BS that they added to that uh, ominous bill, including like uh, some money for new museums, a library, and uh, this stupid bill law that's going to make like getting a like live streaming copyright stuff a felony I have grown to really despise the United States Congress I really have and a lot of the crap they put into that ominous bill did not need to be there to begin with shouldn't have been there and a lot of the stuff should have been brought up individually without being snuck in under the radar into this this overbearing two point trillion dollar bill. The nine hundred billion dollars relief for the bug, I, I understand that. It puts us further in debt, and maybe there were some things in the ominous bill that that were necessary to be included. But there was a lot of that that wasn't. And this is par for the course. This is standard operating procedure by my Congress, by the United States Congress. And I know other governments are probably just as guilty about this as well, but I'm sick of it. You know, people go on and on all day long bashing Trump. And look, I'm not a big fan of Trump. I wasn't a fan of Obama or W. But even though Congress gets record low approval ratings, for some reason, they don't get thrown over the rakes to the degree that the presidents do, especially with Trump over the past four years. Like, there's plenty of times when Congress was just as deserving of, of the criticism as Trump was. And not everything Trump did as president was bad. And that's the problem. People hated Trump so much that it was like everything. Trump bad, Trump bad, Trump bad. It got tiresome. 
Well, there's some things he did that I disagreed with. Of course, there's plenty of things he did. But there's also some things I think most people, if they would have just got past the fact it was Trump, would have been like, you know what? Okay, cool. I'm on board with that. All right. You know, as they say, a broken clock is right twice a day. But, yeah, my Congress, I swear, most of them need to go. But, unfortunately, the problem is the voters keep re-electing these assholes. But uh, speaking of politics, real quick before we move on, because I do have a political channel that kind of covers these things in case you're interested. It looks like uh, we got Biden-Harris administration is coming January 20th. We also have a new Congress. I think they're going to be sworn in on the 6th of January. 6th of January, the new Congress. Uh, most of them are the same. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. So not really much of a difference. There'll be a few new faces. Well, a lot of them will be the same old, same old, worthless, incompetent, corrupt uh, elected officials, senators, and Congress people that were responsible for the ominous bill and previous other bills. It's just sad because a lot of them need to retire. A lot of them need to be voted out. And it's just ridiculous. But on January 20th, unless something happens that... Is just earth shattering that reveals that all the allegations of male voter fraud were true and some grand conspiracy to steal the election from Trump is revealed with damning evidence that cannot be denied. Dun, dun, dun. I'm talking about like a whole bunch of smoking guns and smoking cannons. Looks like Biden is going to be the next president of the United States for now. And I think he'll last two years. And then Harris, she'll become the next president. So you have the uh, 46th president, which will be Joe Biden. And then, mark my words, within two years, he'll be gone. He'll he'll probably retire because he already is suffering some issues that have been noticed by a few people but denied by others. So, I don't know. He may just be more like a puppet president for two years. And around the two-year mark, he'll retire so that uh, Harris has a chance to be president for 10 years. If you go by the Constitution, there is actually a way for somebody to hypothetically be president for 10 years. They have to take over from vice president to president two years into their predecessor's administration. And then they, they still get to run for election twice. So if she does that, then she gets to be 47th president two years into Biden's presidency She'll be able to run for election in 2024. And if hypothetically she's elected, then she gets to run for re-election in 2028, which means that Harris, she has a very real possibility of being president for up to 10 years. May not happen. She may not do a good job. She and Biden may turn out to be a disaster. I wouldn't be surprised if that turns out to be the case. I would be shocked if it was the opposite, if they turned out to be great. And everybody fell in love with the Biden-Harris administration and they solved all our problems and everything became hunky-dory. I, <laughs> I have my doubts. But anyways, a um, little fun facts about uh, the way things work here in the good old U.S. of A. Did I mention I hate politics? Yeah. Still, at the same time, there's just there's like this small minor drawl I have to it. I guess because it affects our lives. And I guess that's why I feel so obsessed with it at times, because I, I want better elected officials. I want the government to actually work for and by the people. And I want to rein in the corruption. I want more good public servants. I want them to be responsible and stewards of the people. But it just feels like for the longest time that has not been the case. Maybe I'm just expecting too much, probably. But... Shifting gears uh, to uh, something else I also covered recently on my political channel. or my, I don't even know what to do with that channel anymore. I hate, I hate that it's become so unfocused because I like having focus when it comes to my channels. I did do a review of my uh, second season of Mandalorian. Why, do I, why did I say my second season of Mandalorian? It's not my second season of Mandalorian. It's everybody's second season of Mandalorian. Especially if you're a Star Wars fan. I thought it was great. Without spoiling it. Hey, I spoil it in that review video. I thoroughly enjoyed the second season of Mandalorian. And uh, 
I look forward to uh, future Star Wars content from uh, Dave Filoni and uh, John Favreau. I hope they end up taking over Lucasfilm because right now there has been an ongoing uh, civil war within Lucasfilm between the Kathleen Kennedy faction and the Filoni Favreau faction. And it's, it's time for Kennedy to go. It's time for her to walk away. And with her, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of her alkalites or those that are part of her faction are gone too. I hope so. Because there's been some drama. And yeah, we're going to touch on some drama here. For the longest time, especially with the sequel trilogy, there have been those that enjoyed the sequel trilogy, just like Kathleen Kennedy, for reasons I did not. But then there's been those of us that hated the sequel trilogy for, for legitimate reasons. But we get called all sorts of lovely names, haters, phobes, is you get the idea. But within her uh, faction, uh, there are those in the social medias that like to go out bashing uh, YouTubers, content creators that cover Star Wars. Now, I guess you could say to a very small degree, I, I cover Star Wars. Not like one of the bigger YouTubers out there, but you know, in passing, I like to. One of the biggest ones recently uh, had an emotional reaction, like so many to the final few minutes in the second season finale of Mandalorian. And one of these members of the uh, cult of Kathleen Kennedy was openly mocking him and bashing him and others for their emotional responses to, you know, the final moments of season two of The Mandalorian, which is very unprofessional, by the way, extremely. To go on a social media as somebody that actually works at Lucasfilm, I forgot what his position is. I'm not even going to mention him, but... Very unprofessional. It's not the first time he's done something like this. And in a lot of other businesses, somebody like that would be easily shown the door. It's not the first incident, but I think it should be the last. And I think he needs to go because, uh, let's just say some people are not happy about this. Not at all. And what's weird is this specific YouTuber, uh, Star Wars Theory, I'll mention him. I used to love watching his content because I do like that alternative like what if scenarios, whether it's alternate history with uh, Cody at alternate history hub or a few others or like uh, Blinkoff with his battlegrounds where he does these hypothetical scenarios. But for the most part, Star Wars theory, he seems like a really good guy. There definitely are uh, Star Wars content creators that have been a lot more critical of the Kathleen era, the sequel trilogy than him. I think he has been somewhat, but he's always been kind of PC by comparison. But now that he finally ends up finding himself in the, the eyes, the, the crosshairs of uh, the Kathleen Kennedy faction, or this one particular individual. Now he's upset about it, and rightfully so. And it's not just him that, that was being made fun of, but he was, I guess you could say, singled out by somebody who allegedly should be a professional, especially since they work at Lucasfilm. And so now he's obviously come around and is, is not happy about it, and neither is his fans, and I, I get that. And then, unfortunately, there are those that are part of the Phantom Menace, Phantom Menace as they're called, that don't really like him very much. They consider him to be a, a shill, and I don't think he's a shill. I'm more in the middle, right? I'm more in the middle. On one end, I do like several YouTubers that are part of the Phantom Menace. I sometimes feel like they're overly uh, critical, like a lot of them just don't think that Star Wars can be saved even though there are those of us that believe it can be, just like with how well Mandalorian has been received. And that's not thanks to uh, Kathleen Kennedy or JJ or Ryan Johnson, who are responsible for the sequel trilogies and the uh, solo garbage movies. But when you have better people that actually care about the franchise and the lore and the fan base, like Favreau and Filoni and everybody else involved with them, then... If they succeed and if they take over and Kathleen Kennedy and, and her elk go out the door, then that is a win for Star Wars. So I don't think it's too late. Besides, it's, these are works of fiction. I enjoy them so much. But at the end of the day, I can disregard the sequel trilogy. It's still garbage to me. It could have been better. But at the end of the day, it is what it is. And... If this is a victory for Star Wars fans, uh, the success of Mandalorian, and it leads Disney to give more control over to Lucasfilm, to Filoni and Favreau, and less to Kennedy and, and those that are part of her faction, then that's good. And if you're going to have scumbags like this one dude who was 
attacking Star Wars Theory and other YouTubers, you know, because of their emotional reaction to the end of Mandalorian, well, obviously they don't deserve to be at Lucasfilm. Because you have to ask yourself, are they really Star Wars fans? If, if they're just going to bash fellow Star Wars fans for being emotionally moved by that. I mean, isn't that kind of the point of movies and TV shows and literature and poems and video games? Entertainment and also some sort of emotion, whether it's uh, laughing, you know, something really funny, you know, brings out some humor in you, makes you laugh, gives you something to laugh about. Or like a romantic comedy, right? It makes you feel, oh, romantic. Oh, I wish I had a love like that. I wish I had somebody like that. Or, or something like a horror movie that scares you, that just drives your emotions one way or the other. Isn't that the point of these works of fiction that we love so much? They're escapism, but they're also for entertainment, and there's also an emotional attachment we have to, to this stuff. So why are you surprised when people get emotionally moved by something like the final scenes of Mandalorian. I was moved by it. I mean, you go back and watch my review of uh, Mandalorian season two. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll hear it in my voice, how moved I was. I thought it was great. It just shows that some people that work at Lucasfilm need to go. And hopefully they will soon enough, especially Kathleen Kennedy and uh, her faction, because obviously they don't deserve to be there because they don't get Star Wars. They don't. All right, so uh, more drama. Who wants more drama? Do you want more drama? Do you? Truth is, I don't really like drama. <laughs> I used to be accused of being a drama queen back in radio when I was younger. But then I, I, I think that kind of opened my eyes to realizing, yeah, this is kind of an addiction, isn't it? So I kind of mellowed out after that. <laughs> it's a true story. Ask my friend Tasha. She accused me of being a drama queen once. Maybe she's right. But then again, she did talk too damn much during her, her uh, show. It wasn't a talk show. It was rock radio, and I was a music director. But anyways, <laughs> she was right about me being a drama queen back then. So speaking of drama, there's uh, YouTube drama. I'm sure you've heard of YouTube drama before. There's channels that have become quite popular covering YouTube drama. I try to stay away from YouTube drama. I try to focus on my own thing, making content and live streaming, as well as playing with my friends, my fellow content creators and streamers. So that's what I focus on. And whenever I watch other people on YouTube, it's people I like, people I enjoy. Like whether it's a history channels or Star Wars channels, like Star Wars Theory, I like his stuff. I mentioned that, like uh, Thor Skywalker, Eckerd's Ladder, a few others out there I like as well. There's there's ones out there I don't like, but guess what? Do I go out bashing them or disliking their videos? No, I just don't watch them. I like to focus on content and streams that I that I do enjoy. Like occasionally I like to watch Nerd Rotic or Doomcock or I uh, see a few others like Midnight's Edge. I love the work Midnight's Edge does. I mean, I don't always agree with them, but I still love their work. But... At the same time, I, I try to avoid drama. Channels that I dislike, like for example, GTA YouTube clickbaiters or Red Dead Online clickbaiters, I avoid them. I ignore them. I don't want to give them any attention, positive and definitely not negative, because all they care about is attention. They care about the views, they care about the subs, they don't care how they get them. But unfortunately, whenever you are in a community, right, when you have your own community of, of fellow content creators and, uh, they each come from a different background and they have different liaisons, different associations from other content creators. Some of them you may know of, some of them might be friends of yours as well. Some of them you have no association with either, but they, they happen to have those connections. And it all, I guess, bleeds over one way or the other. So there was a little drama in the GTA realms. What else is new? Between, uh, let's see, uh, two YouTubers, actually a lot more uh, GTA YouTubers are involved now. Uh, there is a clickbaiter, uh, Ross of the Lost wannabe, named uh, GTA Gentleman. Not to be confused with GTA Man. GTA Man is awesome. He's cool. I like him. He's not GTA Man. I mean, GTA Man is cool. GTA Gentleman is a clickbaiter, and he likes to uh, do questionable things and steal from other people and then copyright strike other people for... Uh, you unintentionally uh, using their thumbnail, I guess. So there was another YouTuber that is friends of a friend. And uh, his name, I think, is JK. I have no real connection with him one way or the other. 
Apparently he got a copyright strike for using uh, somebody else's thumbnail. Even though this same guy has been caught using other people's thumbnails. I feel like copyright striking somebody because they either intentionally or unintentionally copied your thumbnail is going a little far. I mean, I don't think that a content creator or streamer should do it. You should try to make your thumbnails as original as possible. Not always easy to do, but at the same time, for example, Rockstar Games, right? They put out artwork, they put out uh, screenshots in their news wires that are fair use that content creators and streamers can use without facing the wrath of Rockstar Games or Take-Two. I know this to be true because guess what? I've been using those screenshots and artwork for over six years now. Have I gotten one single copyright strike or anything from Rockstar Take-Two? No. Has anybody else? No, because it's media stuff. It's fair use. So there's already plenty of screenshots out there, plenty of Rockstar art that anyone that covers GT Online or Red Dead Online could use. And you could just create your own uh, thumb. Most of the time I do try to create my own stuff. Like with uh, my own screenshots with the Rockstar Editor and GT Online or with the advanced camera uh, and uh, Red Dead Online. But you know, there are times definitely you will see me use something that was in a uh, newswire for Rockstar. But I, I try to avoid ever taking anything from anybody else. So on one hand, I don't think that JK should have been copyright striked by this guy, this so-called gentleman. But on the other hand, I feel like JK should have known better than to go and use somebody else's thumbnail. I mean, he's a bigger YouTuber than me. You'd think that somebody that size would, would have an understanding about fair use and what you can use and cannot use as a thumbnail. It just, it feels like laziness in my opinion. But do I think he deserved to be copyright striked and prevented from live streaming for, what, 90 days? No, of course not. I just hope that he's learned his lesson. And at the same time, uh, two wrongs don't make a right and all the nonsense that this other clickbaiter has been up to, because he's been up to quite a few things. Uh, that shouldn't be defended either, but that, guy, that guy's channel has exploded. And it's sad to see that so many content creators and streamers on YouTube that do a lot of clickbaiting and you know do all these dirty tricks and tactics in order to gain views are successful while the rest of us who try to be honest and uh, as original as we can be struggle to grow. It sucks, but I have no control over that. At the end of the day, it's just like I have no control over uh, my elected officials in Congress. I would like for the people to vote most of those assholes out. Just like I would like for most of the viewers and subscribers in the Red Dead Online community and GTA Online community to not watch or subscribe to these clickbaiting douchebags. But I have no control over either situation. All I have control over is who I watch, who I subscribe to, and when it comes to politics, who I vote for. I'm the only one I have any real control over. If I have some sort of influence, like through my videos or live streams, then hopefully my influence is a uh, positive and maybe might lead to some people feeling the same way I do. Not always, but maybe sometimes. That's, that's all I can really do is just uh, inform people, entertain people, and maybe try to influence people in hopefully a positive way. I mean, for the record, I, I just wish that good content creators and streamers, whether it's Red Dead Online or GT Online, and I happen to know a few in, on both games, I believe those are the ones that deserve the views. They deserve the likes. And if there is some degree of selfishness, yes, me too. I would be lying if I said otherwise. It just sucks whenever you see people that are unworthy of views and subscribers getting promoted and their channels exploding when yourself and a few others that you know of that they're far more deserving. They, you continue to struggle. But luckily for me, a lot of new viewers and subscribers have come across me over the past month. So that's definitely a positive in December 2020 for me. And it's, it's hard work. And you know what? I wouldn't have it any other way because this is the person I am. I try to be as honest, open, and transparent as possible. I make mistakes. I'm far from perfect. But I always try to be this person. This is me. And there are plenty of people out there that are fake. And... Unfortunately, sometimes being fake pays off.
because they use every trick, every tactic in the book to uh, to grow. And those of us that try to keep it real, <laughs> it, it takes us a little bit longer. But at the same time, I also am a firm believer in quality over quantity. And I believe I have a better quality of viewers and subscribers than these clickbaiters. You all mean the world to me. Those of you that not only watch my live streams and videos over on the gaming channel, those of you that watch my Burns Report content, whether it's Mandalorian Season 2 review or my Star Wars movie reviews or my political stuff and news, whether you agree with me in, on those topics or not, that's fine. You're, you have a right to disagree with me at times. That's cool. We can simply agree to disagree. We can be civil without uh, keyboard warrioring each other and trying to cancel one another and accusing each other of being ists and phobes and haters. That's that crap we need to get past. I mean, we're supposed to be a civilized society, I thought, but I guess I was wrong. But I am extraordinarily grateful to all of you that watches this channel as well, my vlogs, because this is very therapeutic for me. Once a month, sit back, just driving around in either GT Online or Mafia Defensive Edition. I'll get back to that maybe next month. We'll go back to Defensive Edition next month. And I have that for B-roll while I drive around just reading over some things I wanted to talk about that happened in a previous month. I hope that January 2021 is better, by the way. I, I sincerely do. But we do have a few more things I want to go over real quick before we wrap up. The Independence Bowl, which is the bowl that uh, happens here where I live. It was canceled this year because of the bug. A lot of other college bowls were canceled as well. The sad thing is the Independence Bowl has never been extremely popular. It's a pretty old bowl for college bowls, but it's also pretty small in popularity. So it's very rare whenever the stadium actually sells out because you have to get like one or two really interesting teams to actually show up to the bowl game. I think we had Army locked, but the uh, Independence Bowl community uh, committee could never get like another team on board to come to here to play in the Independence Bowl against Army so it kind of fell through but a lot of other ball games also fell through as well just another casualty of uh, the bug of the 2020 pandemic uh, health issues I'm doing better I did uh, do the uh, what was it the ultrasound and I did get the results and I did go to the doctor at the beginning of the month and uh, I do have a slightly enlarged right kidney and an enlarged uh, liver, which I know about because fatty liver. But in both regards, I feel like I'm uh, having positive inroads because I have tweaked my diet further. I have added things that are a lot more, I guess you could say, helpful to your kidney, like uh, pure cranberry juice, like really pure stuff. It's really pure crap. <laughs> well, organic, and it's not crap. It's good. But I have to dilute it in water. So it's, it's the real deal. It's not that cranberry like ocean spray crap. It's real cranberry. Not cheap, but that helps my kidneys. I've been, I switched from bananas to pineapple because that pineapples are better for your kidneys than bananas. So I did that. So I think that's helped. So I've been doing a lot more things to help both my liver and my kidneys. And I got to say, near the end of the month, I'm feeling considerably better right now than I felt around the time of the ultrasound back in November uh, before Thanksgiving, before I started making these changes. And I'm not at 100%, but I feel like uh, I have a good game plan, and my doctor was in agreement with me about my plan, so I feel like going forward, I, I think that as long as I stick with it and I continue working out, and I uh, start doing more cardio, which is what I'm working on, I, I think that I'm going into 2021, hopefully uh, as healthy as I can be, and I'll continue to lose weight and get healthier because I really, really want to get as fit as a fiddle as possible and finally lose this extra weight that I'm carrying around. It's not that much, but it, uh, I still want it to go. I mean, I wouldn't mind having a nice dad bod. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Another thing the doctor tried to get me to take was the, the flu vaccine. No, it's not happening. But another thing that they're trying to promote now is the uh, the bug vaccine. And uh, I think I'm going to wait on that because there's already reports of side effects. Jeez, I'm shocked. I did not see a rushed vaccine uh, causing side effects. No way. Wow. But once again, teach their own. I don't think people should be forced to take vaccines. That should be up to you. I mean, I'm already social distancing. I'm already washing my hands, wearing masks, doing all the, the right things. So I don't feel like that 
uh, people that don't want to take a vaccine. I don't think they should be forced to, especially in a so-called free society. I think that's what we call a uh, slippery slope. But in conclusion, I think that 2020 was probably top five worst year of my life so far. A few of them, 1982 when my mom died. And uh, see, 2012, it was a very bad year. Uh, like p politics, that's when I finally got really burnt out with politics. One of my cats died in 2012. And uh, a girl I was dating at the time, she dumped me, but... In the end, that was for the best. But it still was kind of a crappy year, 2012. And the world didn't end. So I guess that's a positive of 2012. And 2016 was a bad year because my dad died in 2016. So 2020 definitely goes up there in my top five with 1982 and, uh, let's see, 2016, 2012, 2020. I'm sure one of the years in the 90s was bad. Hopefully 2021 will be better. Here's hoping. I'm continuing to improve my health and uh, losing weight and uh, cardio. I'm focusing the gaming channel more on Red Dead Online now. I'm kind of skewing, skewering away from uh, GTA Online because I feel like my viewers are more interested in my Red Dead Online streams and content. And the truth is GTA Online is rather long in the tooth being uh, seven years old. I will still continue to cover GTA Online's uh, updates in the futures, but predominantly my focus is gonna be on Red Dead Online and occasionally I'll play other games here and there. I think that one way to help my channel grow is to focus on a specific game. And that's how a lot of channels grow. They focus on a specific game. And I've, I've made my choice. I, I see which way the wind's blowing. I see what a lot of my viewers and subscribers have come to the channel for. And I have decided, even though these are trying times for Red Dead Online and some people are worried that Red Dead Online might be doomed. And, and I have my concerns as well. I want to be hopeful. I want to believe that there's still great potential of Red Dead Online and maybe in uh, late spring, early summer 2021, Rockstar will come out with a, a Grand Slam update that will ensure the survival of Red Dead Online, bring more people back to Red Dead Online, and will make that a fun online experience for the Red Dead Online community for many years to come. So I, I guess you could say I am choosing to take a stand with Red Dead Online. I respect the community of Red Dead Online. I feel like we have one of the better communities. We have one of the more realistic communities. We don't have rose-colored glasses. We see the flaws of Red Dead Online. We also see the potential. We also believe in Red Dead Online. We believe that it can be a very good online experience. I mean, yeah, there are some tryhards. There are some griefers in our community, but that's to be expected in any online community. But for the most part, I love the Red Dead Online community. And I have decided that this is the community I'm part of. And that's just the way it goes. This is my community. And that's what my primary focus is going to be on the channel going into 2021. And either I'll go down with the ship or I will, I guess, be sailing high in the success of Red Dead Online in uh, 2021. We'll, we'll see how that goes. But as of right now, it's not like there's any other game that I'm interested in. GT Online, it's fun to play with friends when they're streaming or just off stream. And there's not really any other, any other game that, I mean, I do play some games off stream like uh, Rocket League, uh, Dead by Daylight, not as much as I used to. But anyways, I sincerely hope that you all have all had a very happy holiday season. I hope that some good things have happened to you in 2020 despite all the bad and despite how some things in 2021 might not be looking very optimistic as of right now. At the very least, I hope that 2021 turns out to be better for all of us than 2020. Here's hoping. And in a month from now, if I'm meant to be back here in a month from now to give you my 2021 January vlog, then I hope there's some good stuff in that vlog. And uh, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. But anyways, I wish you all a very happy new year. And I hope that 2021 is better for all of us than this past year because, yeah, 2020 sucked. <laughs>